Thank you very much, Josh. That was very good. Thanks. Avery, you are up. All right. Can y'all hear me or no? Yep. Okay. Let me take his permission away and give it to you. Okay. You got it. All right, I'm Avery Judd. I, uh, I'm going to tell you about all about tiny homes and how cool they are and how useful they are. Um, so we're going to start off with what is a tiny home? They, there's no definition of a tiny home yet because there's so many different things out there and most of them aren't under a technical building code because they're on trailers and it's DOT and it's a whole mess of another problem but generally it's around 100 square foot to 400 square foot it's very basic essential stuff maybe a stove a fridge a heater of some sort or like a mini split system and it's a lifestyle you have to be willing to live in a tiny house for this to work and want to because it's it's a heck of a lot different than living in a big old house that you can go if you're mad at somebody, you go off to the other side of the house. If you're mad at somebody here, you can go upstairs, but they can still see you in the living room. All right, there's probably way more types of tiny houses than I have on my list, but this is what I have. Th these are the main big groups of them. So this is probably the most popular style right now is the travel style. And generally, most people will build this one because it's smaller and you don't need as large of a pickup truck to pull it. Now, some people will have them built and parked at like a camping site, which is nice because you can just leave it there, come to it whenever you want or live in it at the campsite because it's a lot cheaper. Now, this one, you need a lot bigger of a truck and it's a lot harder to pull and park. So then it's going to cost a heck of a lot more, but you're going to get double or triple the amount of space you would with something like this. This is a schoolie. This is generally from old school buses or city buses, um, even bendy buses. I've seen a couple of those. Um, basically just people have turned in uh, old school buses into a livable space. It's pretty basic stuff still. It's a little bit larger than the travel style stuff, but it's all in one contained thing. You don't have to have a truck to pull it. You have everything there. A lot of people add either a rack for motorcycles or bikes and stuff. I've seen some that have like hitches. They can pull a small trailer or with like a car on it or something similar to that. Um, the shipping container. This is getting more and more popular. Um, personally, I've never seen one in real life and in, in my life, but they're definitely becoming more popular. Basically, people just buy old shipping containers that are not being used anymore, and you can stack them on top of each other. You can give it some weird ergonomic shape or whatever you want to do with it. Um, but basically, there's pretty much no limit on how big you want to go with these because you can go side by side, up and down, all over the place. Still very small, pretty minimalistic. Uh, the built-in place, these ones have a lot of code issues with them you have to fight your local places a lot with these because of the especially if you put a loft in a lot of building code areas don't like that you have a ladder that's not technically a um what you, a stairwell going up to it and there's not technically enough height in the loft for it to be a room or like part of it that's living space so it, it gets kind of weird but most of the time it's just a slab on grade and it's just built straight on the slab or maybe on a small foundation like that but it's pretty much the same thing as the pull behind stuff just on a slab and you can't move it you don't have as much freedom with it um why go tiny uh the cost is a heck of a lot less than a traditional house i'll tell you that much you don't have as large of an eco footprint. 
uh, you're not having to pay for all your builders to come in with their trucks every day and park and build it or you're not having to have as much power drawn so you're not having duke blasted a bunch of um carbon and all sorts of bad stuff for the environment out um it's a temporary residence a lot of people will bu- will build a small tiny house when they're and park it on their land when they're waiting on their actual house to be built instead of opposed to living in an apartment or having another house that they're having paid their monthly stuff on top of it it's a lot cheaper that way and then that way they park in the backyard in-laws come over family guests whatever shove them in the tiny house they don't have to be with you everybody's got their space a little bit um if it's built on a travel trailer you got mobility you can go all over the country wherever you want to go super easy um custom ability custom as a bit i can talk um custom customize it there's no two tiny houses that are ever the same pretty much everybody has their different style everybody has the different way of the way they want it so that the tiny house versus the average size home the size is the biggest thing average tiny house is 100 to 400 square feet pretty small a regular average sized home that Americans live in is about 1,500 to, I think it was about 2,000 square feet. So there's a big difference there. Um, Initial costs. Costs for building a tiny home could be as low as like however much you bought the trailer for. But generally it's around 10,000 to about 60,000 compared to a regular home, which is about 200,000 to about 300,000. And the furnishings, generally are built into the tiny home itself because they have to add storage and you can't really get normal furnishings inside of a tiny house because the doors are smaller and stuff like that but generally it's under five thousand and furnishings in a normal home can be anywhere from ten thousand to fifty thousand easily most of the time much more depending on where you're buying it from uh the monthly cost the rent slash mortgage of a tiny house is about 500 bucks and that's paying mostly gas and if you bought it from a builder paying them back until you pay it off that's mostly what that is and then the rent and mortgage for a traditional home this is a very basic home about 1300 is about the lowest and then you got your monthly utility about 50 bucks depending if it's a um if you're parked on like a campsite type area some will just include it in the lot site in the lot with your utility bills and stuff with the water and the the electric that you use in regular homes you're having to spend your water bill your electric bill whatever other stuff that the city makes you pay if you're in your city or county or whatever it's a lot cheaper every month pros of going tiny um the average cost is usually lower than a thousand bucks uh, you have a lot lower utility power usage, so a smaller area that you have to heat and cool cool whenever you need to do that. The appliances are much smaller. Most of the time, like Instapot type stuff, pull it out of the counter, put it on the counter, and done. You're not pulling a whole lot of electricity like you would a traditional stove and oven and stove and uh, refrigerators. It's a good starter home. A lot of people. Um, we'll start off with this. It's a low cost, cheap to move around. It's 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 a good way to get into the market, but without breaking the bank. Um, it's very minimalistic. So if you don't want to take up a whole lot of space, or if you just want to live on a big chunk of land and have a little tiny piece of it and preserve the rest of it, good for you. If you just want to have a little garden outside, you can. Who cares? It's minimalistic. Pretty mobil- mobility. Um, a lot of people will put it on a trailer because they want to go travel the country, but they don't want to sit inside of a normal RV because that's, I don't know, I guess boring to them. Park it by your lake, campgrounds all over the country or wherever you're from. Um, for any of the expression, um, my fiance really likes this one. She really wants me to build this. Uh, you got, you can do pretty much anything you're willing to do as long as you build it correctly. Or if 
you have a strong enough trailer if you're building on a mobile foundation. Um, cons are going tiny. There's a lot of small cons, and there's a few big ones. Um, the storage space. You are very, very, very limited. You would think, oh, <laughs> I need somewhere to put all my blankets in the house. Okay, uh, let me go to, like, Ashley F Home Store and go buy a rack and put everything in it. Can't really do that in a tiny home. You basically have to have just what you need. Like, nothing more than what you have to have. And a lot of tiny homes will have a lot of hidden storage. Like, under all of this is all storage for stuff. These lift up or these doors open. And you can see right here, there's a storage spot in there. Uh, the living area, it's super, super small. Uh, this is probably a larger than normal tiny home area inside the house itself. Um, most most of the time in a normal house, you got multiple rooms. Most tiny houses are one, maybe two actual rooms. Um, this is the biggest con, is if you have a mobile structure. I don't know if, about you, but last time I checked, a uh, Ford Ranger cannot pull very much. Um, so I don't know if Grandpa's truck's going to work. So you might have to buy a big old F-350 or something bigger, depending on the size of your house which you normally wouldn't have to think about in a regular house because I don't know about you. I don't move my house a lot. Uh, there's a bunch of hidden costs, like the trailer cost. Some can be anywhere from like 500 bucks for a small one to a couple thousand for some of the bigger ones. Buying the wrong size truck. Oh, my F-150 can pull that. No, no, it can't. It's, it's going to be way too much. Um, and then permits. Depending on the city you're in or the area you're in, um, a lot of campgrounds don't even want you to park a tiny home there because it just looks weird to them. It's not traditional. They don't like it. A lot of cities don't want you to build it because of it's not technically up to code because of it's a smaller footprint and it's a trailer and they don't like it. And you don't want to put a trailer in the middle of the city for some reason because, you know, it's the city. Um, tiny houses are making a big impact. I myself could see myself building one the next five or six years just to start off it's a lot smaller it's a bet it's a better way to get into living into a house without having to live in an apartment complex that you're losing money on because it's not an asset when you get an apartment it's an asset when you have a tiny house because it's yours you can call it your own and you can actually make money off of it a lot of times and I think that's it. Harley, you're talking, but you're muted. Questions? Did you discuss, like, maybe the average weight range? That way you'd have to know which vehicle to buy. Because, I mean, if you're going to really tow this thing, you got to... Yeah, um, it would depend on the trailer that you use, the materials that you're using. But from what I've seen, you have to have, most people use at least an F-250 because they're around 10,000 pounds on average for some of the middle-sized ones. Yeah, so those will only cost you twice what it costs you to build the house. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Were, were you able to track down uh, any communities or cities that are particularly friendly to tiny homes? Um, or starting to trend that way? I've not, I, from what I read and what I saw, I didn't see any like cities that are trying to do that. I, I have seen a couple of um, like tiny home villages that people can go park in, like this one on this front screen. Um, but there's none locally that I could find on Google for some reason. But I'm sure if you dug deep enough, you could easily find some. Do RV parks allow them now? Uh, depending on the RV park, a lot of times you have to call ahead and ask because um, they're still kind of skeptical about the tiny home stuff. But most are allowing them now. This is in uh, Mills River. It is a tiny home community. Is that behind Ingles or where is 
I don't know. I've never been there. Oh, so it's set up for tiny homes specifically. Yep. yep. Damn, somebody had a vision. Yep. That looks like about 100 acres. Yeah, Mark, everything in Mills River is just behind the angles. <laughs> I, fi I figured that. Including Mills River. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't been out there in a while. So Thank this you. is... Uh... This is a former student of mine, Andrew uh, Wing, and he is uh, in the process of building his tiny house, and uh, he just recently pulled it out to um, to the uh, to that tiny home community. How how you pronounce that? Uh, Alcone, 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 Bell Tiny House Community. So uh, he had he's. Uh, just recently got married, actually, and that's him and his wife's uh, uh, tiny house. I thought he's done a really excellent job on that. I have uh, another student who his fa he and his father run uh, van life conversions up in um, Marshall or... Yeah, it's Marshall. Marshall, okay. Uh, yeah, so Mark, uh, he lives in a tiny home, sure enough. Yeah. 264 square feet. That's nice. I like that. Which, whatever it is. But yeah. I, I went slightly different. I have all full-size appliances. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually looking to get this stove for ours, so I have... Uh, I've purchased a bus and we are, we are working on it as we speak. So uh, this weekend, we got all of the plywood down. We had to pull all the plywood up, got the plywood down, insulation, all that good stuff. And uh, some of this was really fun to try to, to put in, obviously. And uh, so it's been a thing. I also have built a tiny house. I've built, I've built several tiny houses. This particular tiny house is built out of pallets. You can kind of see inside the window there, the inside finishes were not put on at this time, but uh, it's still in the process and uh, it's sitting over here beside the bus and both of them are getting wet and I need to get something going. And then we've got this cheap RV over here. And this was, this is the reason that we decided to build a tiny home and a schoolie because RVs suck. They you buy them, you pull it off the, the the lot, and it depreciates worse than a car. I have uh, I have really just been frugal on building this. Most of my wood has been uh, reused. I've got uh, pallets that I've used. So everything I've scrounged for, I have currently a little over a thousand dollars into it, not quite 2000 and I've already been offered 20,000 for it. So uh, there are companies that build tiny houses. This is the tiny, the Tumbleweed Tiny House Company was probably one of the first uh, companies to ever start building these as production. And um, the, the, the original owner, uh, sold it off so uh if you want to you can do some old searches on youtube for tiny for tumbleweed tiny house and uh he'll give you a, a tour of it and it's pretty cool he's a little bit corny but he uh, he he built a house very much like this lived into it him and his wife lived in it for many years i'm going to think like 10 years or so i don't remember exactly but then now he's got kids and he upped uh, from a hundred square foot house to a 400 square foot house. So him and, so him and his wife and two kids and a dog live in a bigger house now, but it ain't very much bigger. My little tiny house is 96 square feet. Uh, that includes the loft. It is, uh, it's, it's 12 foot long, six foot wide or uh, seven foot wide. So it's not a very big one. It's only 42 inches of space in the loft. So it is quite unique. <laughs>